Hello everyone, David here. <gasps> What's this? Oh my god. I'm in a high definition. Oh, that is correct. A big change is coming to the Dark Spider David channel. I will now be recording at full 1080p thanks to the new Canon Vixia HFR 500 that I recently bought and thank God for that and there's a number of reasons as to why I purchased this new camera but before I get into that hey guys welcome to another vlog I'm gonna do another one because it's been a while since I've done one and I want to use this vlog to announce a couple of things one of them is in fact the my new purchase which is this brand new high definition camcorder if you guys are barely tuning into my channel and are thinking about subscribing please do so because I got plenty of videos coming soon some some of which I'm actually kind of announcing in this video so keep watching but if you haven't been watching my videos then I feel the need to tell you that up until this point I've been recording my videos on my iPod this thing right here it's actually on right now see that right there so I felt like it was time for a change for a number of reasons and the iPod is a rather big reason as to why I purchased this new HD camcorder. For one, this thing has been in my possession for about a year and a half now. I got it uh, around Christmas time 2012 and since then for the past maybe three, four, maybe five months it's already starting to glitch. It's already becoming very very slow when it comes when it comes to its response to the touch screen whenever I want to hold down something to have it appear or to have it respond to do something with a certain app like for example snapchat I have snapchat on my uh, on my iPod and with snapchat you have to press and hold the screen in order to be able to access photos and stuff like that but because of how unresponsive the screen is there's moments where I would literally lose the photo or the message that I got and without being able to get a good look at it or be able to read it promptly because of the fact that I would lose it thanks to this very stupid unresponsive screen. But more so than that is the fact that whenever I would record videos, I've already had a few instances where the iPod would just stop recording. It would just stop recording and sometimes I wouldn't pay attention, which is partially my fault, I should check periodically to see if it's still recording, but Sometimes I would be confident and I would ramble on my videos without taking a second look at the at the at the iPod while it's recording to see whether or not it's actually still recording. But there were instances where it would stop recording and I would go on for about 20, 25, maybe even 30 minutes during the review or the video or whatever it is that I'm doing and then I go back and I find out that the video stopped recording at the 3 minute mark. And that's like 27 minutes of nothing and my voice is already tired uh, I'm already winded from all the talking because talking in front of the camera and being able to maintain some, some sort of showmanship I mean I'm sounding a little pretentious right now but I, and I'm sorry about that but it is hard work alright it, it, it is a little bit of a uh, it does take out a little bit of exhaustion from from us not, not just me but any youtuber will tell you that that in order to maintain some sort of upbeat type of persona in order to keep you guys entertained it, it it takes some form of energy away from us physically so after spending all that time talking and we're like oh, I don't want to record this again I have to wait until the next day and sometimes that would cause delays that would explain why some of my reviews have been well not all of them but a few of them have been rather late so to do away with that I went ahead and bought this camcorder and now I can record without worrying about any of that I can now look at myself because this camera does not have a front facing camera that is full HD it does have two cameras one in the front and one in the in the back here but the one in the back is the only one that records at 720p high definition whereas the front one is standard definition and since it's when I would record with the front facing camera, it, the image would be upside down whenever I would go into post production, so that was kind of weird. So I would have to record with this facing towards me. So because of that, I wouldn't be able to see whether or not I was in the frame, whether or not it's recording, and whether or not it looks good, if the lighting is uh, balanced and whatnot. And now I can do this with this new camcorder. I can literally see myself right now in the screen, so that is very awesome. 
And to top things off, of course, I'll be at full 1080p high definition as opposed to the 720p on this thing. And this is the fourth generation. I don't think I've mentioned that. This is actually the fourth generation iPod. This is not the fifth generation. So this thing is a little, uh, is already a little bit behind its time considering how advanced our technology is becoming. But that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get a brand new camera. Reason number two is because I'm bringing a particular kind of review back to the Dark Spider David channel. Part of one of the many changes that is coming to this channel this year. I, I said to myself at the beginning of this year, or more so the end of last year, that there were going to be some rather big changes coming to the channel, some positive changes. And this particular review that I'm bringing back really does demand a better quality camera in order to be able to capture some of the details that I'm trying to present in the video. That's right, Transformers is back, at least for just a little while because in anticipation for the new Transformers Age of Extinction, I was about to say Age of Ultron, Age of Extinction movie that is coming out, which I'm kind of looking forward to seeing, but, you know, I do have my reservations because of the fact that Michael Bay is still attached. But, I did look at these two figures that you're seeing on screen right now and thought to myself, I actually kind of want these. Now, unfortunately for some of you, because you've probably been wondering, like, oh, what's the next figure he's going to get in this line? Unfortunately, these will be the only figures that I'll be getting from the Age of Extinction line. I know that there's like two other uh, uh, Dinobots that are out right now in Deluxe class, and you also got a new Bumblebee. And you also, of course, got the Voyager version of Grimlock and the leader version of Optimus Prime. But neither one of those figures interests me because, first of all, Prime... Ugh, it's just... wow. And... Voyager Grimlock doesn't look that bad, but between that and Leader, I I prefer to go with the Leader. Plus, getting these two figures allows me to display them in the way that they were in the trailer, with Prime in his Voyager size being uh, mounting Grimlock in his Leader class form, and they'll be to scale. Plus, like I said, I already preferred uh, Leader Grimlock over Voyager because I think he just looks a little bit better, and I think. Out of all the figures, the Chrome actually kind of benefits this guy more so than the Voyager one. Or, uh, you know, whatever, Optimus Prime, First Encounter, for, uh, First Edition, whatever the hell that was called. Leader Prime, uh, y you know, you only got a little bit of Chrome and then the rest is just bleak. I don't know, I don't, it's, I don't like it. But more so than that is that I actually rather, rather really like the look of Voyager Prime or Evasion Mode Optimus Prime. For one, his alternate mode looks like a straight-up G1 truck, which is what he is more than likely going to look like at the be at the beginning of the movie, especially at what, from what we've seen in the in the trailer. And that's a nice little homage to G1 from Bay. I think that's actually kind of nice. But more so than that is that I just I, I like his look in in robot mode better. And granted, I agree that he deserves some more paint applications, but that's that's more for the review. I'll say that for the review. But I just like him a whole a whole lot better than Leader Prime, which is a little kind of, a little sad to really think about. And one of the biggest complaints with this line as to as to why I'm not buying any more from this line, and I'm just gonna stick with these two figures, is because one, they're getting expensive and they're getting smaller. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy how these figures are shrinking in size, yet they're augmenting the price. And I remember reading somewhere that. It has to do with like the oil prices and uh, the the chemicals that are used to make the plastic are becoming much more expensive. Hence, the figures have to go up in price, and hence they have to be reduced in size because they can't be using that much plastic or something like that. And I, I guess you know, in analytical terms, that could kind of make sense. But honestly, you you know, I, I'm sure you, you will get more of our money if you stay more faithful to us than you do to corporate. But that's just my viewpoint. But yeah, I got these figures that are going to be going up this month, leading up to the release of Age of Extinction in terms of their reviews. And I actually have a couple of more figures on pre-order from Big Bad Toy Store. Some figures that I'm really excited about, so like some Figma figures. Figma's releasing a few figures based on the Avengers. Um, let's see, what else do I got? There's going to be some reissues of the Batman Arkham Asylum and Arkham City figures that I really want, especially 
Batman in those collect in those sets so that I can finally have all three Bat Batman from Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and Arkham Origins, and hopefully Arkham Knight, which has been delayed until 2015. It's sad, 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 sad. But hey, I'd rather have them delayed and have it be an amazing game rather than just rush it and give us a piece of shit. That's just me. And I also have my first Hot Toys pre-order now. I'm so looking forward to that. Let's hope I'm still financially stable by then in order to be able to afford it. But yeah, that's one form of reviews that I'm bringing back to Dark Spider David. And for that, I do need a better camera because this just wasn't cutting it. It wasn't bring, bringing forward the, the detail that I wanted. And I, for some reason, I don't know what it was, but there's something in the in the back camera that for some reason when I got a little closer to the figure, there's a certain spot at the top of the image that for some reason would be really blurry for some reason. I would wipe this off, wipe this off, I would use chemicals and such like that to be able to make sure that this is clean, but for some reason it's it was still blurry, so I'm like, this is obviously has something to do with the lens. It wouldn't appear so much when I, whenever I would do movie or video game reviews, but when I did figure reviews and I would actually zoom in, well not zoom in, because whenever I would zoom in with this, it would actually it, it would actually enlarge the image. The camera doesn't move, at, the lens on the camera doesn't move at all. Contrary to what this new camera is going to be able to do, I will actually be able to zoom in on figures. This, it would just zoom in here, it wouldn't actually zoom in on the, on the lens. So hence this would look very pixely. But whenever I would move the camera forwards physically, it would show that little blurry spot, and I have no idea where that would be there. So I would finally get rid of that. Reason number three for a new camera. I, Dark Spider David, I am announcing another announcement, another big announcement. I am announcing that I will be attending Comic Con this year. I'm very excited for that. I already got my badge, I already booked my hotel and everything, and I'm set. And hopefully this camera will document many fond memories, and hopefully memories that will not make me not want to go the following year. Now because of the fact that I'm going for the first time this year, I'm, I'm actually playing it safe. And I'm actually going to go just Saturday and Sunday. Saturday the 26th and Sunday, is that correct? Yeah, Sunday the 27th. So my idea is to just head over there Friday night, check into my hotel, enjoy the city, uh, at least hope to enjoy the city because San Diego is so close to the border and you know how things have gone, uh, how crazy things have gone in Mexico. And I'm Mexican, alright, so that's kind of sad for me to say that more and more of us are becoming scared to visit some of our family over there in Mexico and San Diego is pretty close to there, so let's hope I'm in for, for a safe weekend, but yeah, I would really love to enjoy the city that Friday night, and then Comic-Con Saturday and Sunday. And so that's the plan right now. I already, Like I said, I already got my hotel. I'm hoping to hopefully see some people that I know there. So, if you guys are planning to attend Comic-Con, maybe we can meet up. We, maybe we can chat. Maybe we could talk about some of the things that are going on at Comic-Con, some of the panels, stuff like that. I'm very excited for that, and I'm hoping to document all of that on this brand new camera. And other than that, that's really about it for why I bought a new camera. I just wanted to really upgrade to the next level. I, d trust me, as much as I would love to upgrade to a much more advanced camera that would be able to be used not only for recording videos such as these, but to actually film short films to get to, to, to go ahead and propel my career into becoming an actual film director. I just can't do that right now because that type of camera is available in my nearest Best Buy and every time I go to Best Buy I check it out and I'm like oh my god I love this camera but I'd say it's like 800 900 bucks and right now I simply cannot afford it that's literally like two-thirds of my bank bank account so I just wanted to take just a smaller but rather broader step into hopefully enhancing my channel and I'm hoping that this new camera will allow me to do to do so and I actually wanted to it brings even more upgrades to this upgrade in and of itself and one of them was a external microphone to bring some really good and better sound quality to my videos and something that would just sound a whole lot closer to the sound source which is my voice but unfortunately this microphone that I'm holding here which I just I just arrived today from Amazon I don't know what it is but it just doesn't work 
I hooked it up to my camera. I tried it a number of times, and it's just it just doesn't want to work. I mean, I don't know what's up with it, but I tried every setting on my camera. I tried to figure out if there's a way to have it recognize the the, the microphone, but it just doesn't want to do it, and so. I'm terribly sent by that. Not to mention the cable is actually rather short. Let me show you the cable right here. This is short. This is about maybe two, two and a half feet. And for figure reviews, this would not be that bad of a thing because I would be sitting right next to the camcorder because my hands would have to be like this. But this is definitely a problem when it comes to vlogs such as this where I'm more than two and a half feet from the camera or with movie, movie reviews or video game reviews. And so I thought about, you know, maybe a 3.5 millimeter extension or maybe a MP3 recorder, but that's out of the question considering that they're like 90 bucks and considering how much I've already spent on not only the camera, but also the SD card that I had to get because I needed to get a brand new SD card because the one that I was using was a class four and that wasn't up to par with what the camera needed and so I needed to get a class 10 which is what I'm recording on but because of that there's no way that I'm spending 90 bucks on a recorder and so because of the fact that not only is this cable rather short but also because the microphone is just not working period no matter how how much I temper with the camera and try to figure out all the settings it just doesn't want to work so I'm really contemplating on returning this getting my $32 back and hopefully you know, save up a little bit, especially considering that I've been spending quite an awful lot on the figures and the camera and all of that, so I'd rather be a little bit more resourceful with my finances. So that is pretty much it for this video. I mean, I really don't know what else to talk about besides some of the things that have been going on lately with some news, but I think this video has gone on long enough. I really cannot see. Let me go ahead and borrow my glasses here real quick. It has been 18 minutes. See, with this camera I can actually see how long I've been recording. And considering that it's been 18 minutes, maybe I'll go ahead and just talk about a few things more for about, let's go ahead and say five minutes, just for you guys, five minutes. So let's see, let's talk about some of the news that have been going on recently in terms of the movies, video games, and all things in between. I've already mentioned one, Batman Arkham, Arkham, Arkham Knight has been delayed to 2015 and that sucks. That sucks an awful lot. An awful lot of video games are being delayed and just recent, just today it was announced that Jupiter Ascending, the Wachowskis, uh, the Wachowski siblings, I want to call them the Wachowski brothers but considering that one of them is not a brother anymore, more so of a sister, had to call them the Wachowski siblings or the Wachowskis or whatever, but the guys who, but the people who created The Matrix. They got a new movie that was supposed to come out literally next month in July, and just out of nowhere they say we're pushing it to February 2015. And people are speculating that it's because they don't want it to flop, and I can kind of see it why because it's an original movie, which critically is a good thing, but commercially is kind of a bad thing because. People just love sequels, prequels, adaptions, remakes so much that whenever something original comes, it really needs to have something behind that, that behind it that will make people really want to go see it. And I think right now, one of the people, not necessarily the only person, but one of the people that can do that with an original project, especially one that he's that he has coming out literally this year in November, is Christopher Nolan. But the Wachowskis, I don't think they have that much, you know, oomph to make people go see a movie that is original. Despite critics and people such as myself commending them for wanting to do something original. But that's probably why they went ahead and pushed it for 2015 is because they don't want it to flop in July during the summer movie, movie season. Now as to why they delayed Arkham Knight, and by they I mean Warner Brothers and Rocksteady, from what I hear, they just need to polish it more. It looks like they need some more time to develop what they c continue to perceive. A an environment that is way bigger than what you got in Arkham City. So because of that, they need some more time to make this an even bigger and better game. And like I said already, I'd rather them have them just take more time in developing their game and make it an amazing game rather than just rush it and have uh, a huge embar embarrassment on their hands. So, and you know, a video game delay doesn't always equal a bad video game. I mean, The Last of Us was delayed by a month. 
Grand Theft Auto V was delayed by like four or five months. So uh, a video game delay in Watch Dogs was delayed until this year, and recently that came out to an awful lot of good reviews. So it doesn't always mean that it's going to be a bad game. Uh, it, when it comes to video games, delays actually sometimes equal good games, whereas movies, it, you know, it's a little bit uh, iffy to see a movie that was near its completion being delayed a few months. Could it be that the studio is very, very uh, unconfident about their project? So, who knows. So, let's see, what else could I possibly talk about? Maybe some of you guys were wondering what my opinions are on Batman vs. Superman, the title, Ben Affleck in a costume, pretty much what everybody else already says that. Ben Affleck looks good in the costume, but we still have yet to see whether or not he's actually going to pull it off as Batman, and we're probably not going to see any glimpse of that whatsoever until we finally see a trailer. As for the title, I dig it. I like it that Batman is first instead of Superman. I don't get the V. I mean, VS. What's the difference? Just put VS. That's all you have to do. VS. Done. Dawn of Justice, on the other hand, it feels just a little cheesy to me just a li just a tiny bit not so not as much as you would think i i i perceive it to be but it it, it does sound a little cheesy you know dawn of justice da, da, da. you know it just sounds like that kind of title even though it is alluding at the justice league even even though all of the casting news have already solidified that there's going to be a justice league movie Regardless, you know, no matter what happens, Warner Brothers will make sure it happens. It, it culminates. It, it it comes to fruition. You know, it's yeah, it's gonna happen, whether we like it or not. And what the hell's going on at Marvel? I mean, Edgar Wright departs Ant Man, and when I heard that, I was just like, just like I felt about Arkham Knight. No, what, what what's with all these news? I mean, come on, now. That, that, you know, they started talking about what directors they could get to replace him because apparently he departed from creative differences and who knows, maybe one of those differences was the fact that he genuinely wanted Hank Pym to be in the movie but then they went ahead with this other character whose name I can't remember played by Paul Rudd and Michael Douglas I think Michael Douglas was going to be old Hank Pym and they were going to go for this kind of sequel-esque type of story rather than an actual origin story of Hank Pym becoming Ant-Man and maybe that was one of the reasons why Edgar Wright departed. Now, the directors that they were floating around uh, were very diverse, but they all had one common ground, which is comedy mixed with maybe some other kind of genre. One of those names was Adam McKay, who did Anchorman, Talladega Nights, The Other Guides, fre frequently working with Will Ferrell. And when I heard that, I'm like, really? Like... You had Edgar Wright, and then you go from Edgar Wright to Adam McKay, which is the significant, which is the definitive contrast of American comedies and British comedies, and what makes what funnier. <laughs> You're going from somebody that can really deliver with comedy and using camera work to deliver that comedy with a guy that. Uh, that relies more on on uh, on uh, improvisation, ad living, and whatever Will Ferrell says, whether it has to do with sex or race or drugs or uh, you know, potty humor, whatever. So I felt a little bit of disdain when they said that they were talking about Adam McKay, but then he dropped out. So I'm like, okay, who else? And they started to float around Ruben Flesher. I think that's his name, Ruben Flesher. Uh, I might be botching his name completely, but he did Zombieland, which is funny because Zombieland was the movie that everybody was comparing to Shaun of the Dead by Edgar Wright. So I thought that was actually kind of neat. And to be honest, that guy has been uh, has done uh, quite a good body of work, even though a lot of people are mixed about Gangster Squad. And to be honest, that's the movie from last year that I, if I could go back and redo my review for that movie, I would definitely rate it a little lower than I did because for some reason I gave it like a high 8 and for, I, I, after re-watching the movie I'm like why did I give this an 8? <laughs> it's not a bad movie but it's nowhere near that good of a movie as much as I described it in that review. But Zombieland was genuinely great 
And so, if there was anybody that I can think of to replace uh, Edgar Wright, would definitely be Ruben Fletcher, or whatever his name is, to direct Ant-Man. And along with that, you also got the, de the departure of Drew Goddard to show run the Daredevil series on Netflix. But then they got somebody, I can't remember who they were from. I don't know, they're from another show, I think. Uh, I kind of want to say Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I think. I don't know. I, I really cannot think of who it is. But it's somebody who was attached to uh, an acclaimed show as well. And so, I'm still looking forward to what they do with the Daredevil series. And and on top of that, I'm I'm loving the fact that they're really using Netflix rather well. And really making Netflix what regular networks on TV aren't like NBC or CBS. I mean, Netflix is is becoming much much more prominent in developing shows that people actually want to see than network television. And other than that, I really cannot think of anything else to really talk about. But if you guys do, let me know in the comments, and maybe I'll do another vlog. But for now, thank you guys for watching. If you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so because I got big things coming, especially with this new form of recording. And with this brand new quality, I'm hoping to not only bring new quality in terms of how my videos look, but in terms of how good my videos could be, which is mostly de dependent on me, but I'm hoping to collaborate with some of you and, and, and hopefully bring you guys what you guys want to see in, in, in exchange for how supportive you guys have been with uh, how, many, how many of you have been watching, subscribing, commenting, liking, and... I don't know who it is, but an Injustice Gods Among Us review will be coming, alright? Right now I'm playing Assassin's Creed 2, but in due time I will get to Injustice. Do not fret. Speaking of which, oh my god, so geared up for Metal Gear, no, Metal Gear, Mortal Kombat X, or Mortal Kombat 10, whichever you prefer to call it, even though that is more of a cinematic trailer that doesn't promise how that's gonna how the how the gameplay is gonna look like. Even though there were certain shots in that trailer where they would cut it to to the traditional 2D style framing, how you would have the two fighters like this and you and the cameras that way, and you would see the fighters this way fighting each other like this. That made me look at that footage and go, is this in-game footage? I don't believe so, but holy shit if it is. But I'm definitely excited for, for, for that game. Another game to be excited for 2015 after the delay of our commitment. Anyways, um, like I said, I just want to say thank you to all of you guys who have been supportive. And like I said, hopefully in exchange for that, I will give you guys better quality videos. Not only in terms of how they look, but also in, how, in terms of how they are in general. Whether it be new movie reviews, video game reviews, and now, figure reviews. So... Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe, be sure to like, comment, and let me know what you guys think about this new uh, change in videos. Let me know what you guys want to see in terms of s topics, subjects, uh, and everything in between. So, once again, thank you, and I'll see you guys on the next video.